Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. Round 7 of the Olympiad in Chennai was played today, Friday the 5th of August. And I'm going to plunge straight in and take a look at the top match between Armenia and the United States of America. And let's take a look at the game between Wesley So and Hrant Milkumyan. Wesley with white. It's a Karakhan. Wesley plays this fairly quiet system with knight f3. Bishop g4. This is a very solid reaction by black. So you exchange off that bishop, but you set up. I mean, got rid of the, the so-called bad bishop. You set up the pawns on these light squares. Super solid. And now bishop c5. Lots of ways to play this for black, but this is uh, pretty decent. Knight d7. Where's the exchanges? And then plays rook d1. So black doesn't really want to advance that pawn, which will give white good control over the light squares in the middle, but instead just develops with knight f6, and that means that white can now play the pawn to d4. And now this looks like um, the, the pawn structure is very much like the, the normal Karakhan exchange variation. If we just go back to almost the start. So this is a normal Karakhan exchange variation. But there is a difference here in that normally this knight is going to come out to f3 in the main lines. So if we come back here, and this knight will usually come to d2 as well. Let's come back to where we left the position, bishop d3. You can see that knight is not so well placed on c3. It doesn't, doesn't really have anywhere to go to. Um, you could also say that this knight isn't so well placed. So let's see what happens over the next few moves. Castles, bishop f4, of course, the bishop claims an excellent diagonal here. Now knight b8, that knight was doing nothing on d7. So reroutes to c6. And this knight isn't doing much on c3, so comes back to e2. Knight c6. Now this is threatened, so therefore c3. So we've got that same pawn structure now as in the normal Karakhan exchange variation. But that knight's still not brilliantly placed on e2. Rook e8, rook e1. However, white does have those beautiful bishops. And I would take white every time in this position. g6, well that aims to, to shut out the light squared bishop. Now knight g3, still not a great place for the knight actually. You can see that these squares are, are covered by that pawn on g6. But, well, the e file has to be cleared basically. Knight d7. And black has an interesting idea in mind with this move. Um, here was the thought for a almost nine minutes and play the rook to e3. As we'll see, that's not the most accurate move. Might even be better to play rook e2, just preparing rook e1, or perhaps rook d1. That seems a little bit odd just to play the rook there, but actually this is prophylaxis against e5. And let's see what happens after rook e3. e5 comes. This is the point. This is why black was playing like this. And here Wesley thought for about 11 minutes and he came up with a devilish idea. Best move is just to take this. Now here's the point. Black plays bishop c5, hitting the rook. If the rook comes back, then black is then able to take the pawn on e5 and should be absolutely fine. White can throw this in. And... This position is roughly level. You can see that black's pieces are, are pretty good here. Black has basically liberated his position. After the exchange of bishops, black shouldn't be in any difficulty. But it's, it's about level. White is not worse. But Wesley played bishop h6. Now this is 
This is devilish, as I said. Well, after little reflection, Melkumian decided, fine, I'm going to take some material. The pawn, forks, queen and bishop. Perhaps he'd imagined that Wesley was just going to give up a piece like this. Now, white has two pieces, excuse me, two pawns for the piece and the two bishops. And white certainly has some compensation there. But that wasn't Wesley's idea. He played rook take. So what is this about? Why can't the rook be taken? Well, just watch this. The black king is led to its doom with this attractive queen sacrifice. Not just a queen sacrifice. Look, white is giving up half his pieces here. But the king comes forward and now white has a choice between rook e3, mate, or... Bishop d5. Look at those two bishops. Checkmate. So basically, after this rook takes pawn, black is a pawn down with a hopeless position. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's an extra pawn for white, but also look at that weak pawn on d5. It doesn't take much to swing that bishop round to hit this pawn. Knight f8 played. And here... As I said, the, the rook could just drop back and, and white could play very positionally, just hitting the d-pawn. But Wesley had a big think here, almost 20 minutes, and decided just to play for the attack, and this is crushing. To defend f7, black has to play f5, and then he just took this. He just went for it. Well, unsurprisingly, with such... Firepower on the king side. Black's king cannot survive this. Queen d6 played. Queen g4. And of course if the queen comes over then rook takes knight check. And the, and the queen drops. So rook, uh, knight g6. And here's the trick. Perhaps if black had another move there might be a chance to defend... But rook takes pawn, no doubt Wesley had foreseen all this. If that's taken, then bishop takes g6 is absolutely crushing. So now it's four pawns for the piece. Now if rook f5, well maybe there's a chance to survive with queen h4. So a very cool move now from Wesley. g3, just making sure that there's no queen exchange. Bishop f8. Rook f5 pushes the queen back. Bishop c4 check. And after bishop g5, that was the final move of the game. Black resigned. Well, let's just look at one possible variation. If queen d6, rook f6 hits the queen. If knight here, well, I mean, you can see that if the, the queen moves aside... Uh, well, rook takes knight is, is going to be decisive, followed by queen h4, mate, and, well, mate in a couple of moves. So, if knight here, let's just go to the very end. Rook takes here. And let's finish with another lovely checkmate from the two bishops. That's why you've got to love the bishops. Absolutely deadly. Well, what a crush, but what a cheeky idea from Wesley to set this trap with bishop h6. Thing is, if Melkumian was switched on, he could have got the advantage by playing bishop f8. It's a good move. So white has to exchange bishops. And now you flick in e4. Queen moves. Now the bishop has to move. And basically black just has a beautiful pawn structure here. You know, sooner or later, f5 is going to come. The queen can't do much on its own. And black is definitely uh, better in that position. So a very cheeky trap. Bishop h6, beautiful stuff. Well, that early victory for the US team looked like things were going very well for them. However, Caruana was defeated. And, well, Dominguez won. I mean, the US team is incredibly strong. Lenya Dominguez playing for them now, formerly played for Cuba. But it meant that on bottom board, Sam Shankland had to hold a draw 
against Robert Hanisian from Armenia, had to hold a draw for the USA to win the match. But this is what happened. Shankland had a miserable position, but he defended with great tenacity. And it looks like he's about to exchange the final pawn and should make a draw. However, his opponent played queen g2, a very sneaky move. And, well, Sam had kind of made a pre-move. He'd already grabbed his king and tried to play it c2. He'd anticipated that black was going to check on h1, and then king c2 is the only decent move. But after king g2, he was left with the king in his hand, and the king only has one move, and that's to play king c1, and then queen b2 check, and you take on b b3, and that is completely winning for black. So after queen g2, basically, Sam didn't make another move, he just resigned the game. So that meant that Armenia managed to draw that match to all. So they maintain their lead. Now, let's just look at the pairings for round eight. Um, Armenia have 13 match points, they still lead. And then there are several teams on 12, but the Indian first team defeated the Indian third team today. So Armenia played the Indian first team. And on the second board, the USA, with 12 match points, play the Indian second team. The Indian second team, such a strong lineup there. And uh, Gukesh won his seventh game. He has seven out of seven. He is absolutely on fire. And the Indian second team, well, it would be sensational if they won the Olympiad. But it is so tight there. Um, I, I should also also mention another player from from Ireland who has a sensational score. Conor Murphy has six out of six. Absolutely brilliant. Well done to him. I'll be reporting back. Um, it, it is really tense. Remember, there are only 11 rounds in the Olympiad and round eight tomorrow. Thanks for watching.